Hey friends, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. It's Sean from SGT Report and this is going to be a bit of a departure this particular video for those of you who don't want to hear about spiritual warfare, the book of Revelation and the end of all things. You may want to just click on a different video now. For those of you that do appreciate that information, I have some things I want to share with you about predictive programming and the plans of the elite. I got an email from a SGT report reader who wanted to remain private. He says that he works in New York City and he travels on the subway often, four times a week in fact, to and from where he lives into Manhattan. And he says that he has been noticing all sorts of predictive programming in the subway on posters, movie posters, and things like that. And he wanted to send me some of those screen grabs and photos that he's taken. And it really sparked a thought. It sparked a thought about spiritual warfare. And I just want to play this soundbite from Jonathan Kleck to set the stage about how the flesh and the spirit are at odds and how the elite are constantly selling us on the desires of the flesh. And they're always trying to separate us from the divinity of the spirit. Watch this. Now, I want to talk about the flesh and the spirit. Doesn't the, the, doesn't the spirit war against the flesh, or the flesh war against the spirit? That's what the Bible says. And the spirit lusteth against the flesh. The Bible says they are in opposition to each other, the spirit and the flesh. What's opposition? One's going the opposite direction. They're in opposition to each other. So when you're born of the spirit, you no longer serve the desires of the opposition, the flesh. Get it? It always works out perfectly when you know the truth. You know, I'll pause it there. And I just want to read this as it pertains to the book of Revelation, Revelation 9. Because there are many, many signs that the elite are very much trying to bring about the end times. And that they want to unleash that which is unseen. Take, for instance, the secret activities going on at CERN. And I say secret because, of course, there's the public-facing explanation for what's going on at CERN. And then there's the occult, the hidden. We know what's going on at CERN is far more nefarious than they are sharing with the public at large. And just the CERN film alone that they made speaks to the fact that they are trying to break the veil. They're trying to cut through to the unseen. They're trying to defile God's creation. In fact, they're trying to touch the face of God by finding what they call the God particle. But many believe what they're actually trying to do is open the bottomless pit and pierce the veil between that which is seen and unseen, between that which is in this realm and that which lies beyond this realm. And I just want to share Revelation 9 before we go over some of those predictive programming posters from my friend in New York City. Those posters do suggest that the elite are preparing us for the end of days through their movies and through their Hollywood propaganda. So, Revelation 9, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven onto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Friends, those that are deceived by this current system, in fact, brainwashed into accepting the Illuminati agenda, which is a soulless, godless agenda. It's actually the agenda of the one they worship, the father of lies, right? Ronald Bernard told us who these people at the very top of the pyramid worship. They worship Lucifer. And Jonathan Kleck goes on to remind us that the spirit and the flesh are at odds. They're upside down. They oppose each other and they keep us separated from God. And the goal of the flesh is to keep us separated from God. In fact, the flesh is the enemy of the spirit. The Bible says they are in opposition to each other, the spirit and the flesh. What's opposition? One's going the opposite direction. They're in opposition to each other. So when you're born of the spirit, you no longer serve the desires of the opposition, the flesh. Get it?
So when you're born of the Spirit, when you're born again and you reject the Illuminati demonic Luciferian system, you are at one with the Spirit. Now let's get back to this predictive programming because I do find it very interesting. Here are the themes. Future war, experience a new world, change is coming. For one world to live, the other must die. Two worlds collide, one survives. You are being watched. New roads ahead. The event that shaped our world, collaborate or resist. Let the bad times roll and hard times ahead. Now, that last one, hard times ahead, that comes from Despicable Me, this Despicable Me 3 poster. Hard times ahead, indeed. And what are the minions? The minions are essentially a dumbed-down version of we the people serving their master. And the elite have talked a lot about this. In fact, the elite have predicted in the future there will be a beautiful class of informed people who have knowledge, and then the rest of us, which will be dumbed-down, ugly minions. And this one, also from Despicable Me 3, Let the Bad Times Roll. For whatever reason, the elite really get off on causing pain. They love human suffering. They hate humanity. Again, according to Ronald Bernard, they hate us. They despise humanity, just like the father of lies, the one they worship, does. And then there's this poster from Colony, which I believe is a television show. I haven't watched it, uh, but we have the Falcon in the logo. And, of course, it looks like a transhumanist future where probably uh, human beings will be forced to fight the robots. They're going to either have to collaborate against humanity, right, be traitors to humanity, or resist. Humanity in general uh, will be ruled by robots, and the elite will live in pleasure colonies. Of course, that narrative was first shared in the 1927 film Metropolis, but more current movies like Matt Damon's Elysium show the exact same thing, uh, but the pleasure colonies in that movie are off-planet. And of course we see more predictive programming uh, that pays off what currently is actually happening according to Edward Snowden, the NSA files, the WikiLeaks files. We know that we're all being watched. Everything we do is recorded and saved on a database somewhere so that in the future should they want to target any one of us they can just dig through that individual database. We are all being watched. That last slide actually came from the show Person of Interest. And again, it's all predictive programming. If you've watched any of the CSIs, if you've watched any of the shows on CBS, the mainstream media one-hour shows, the procedural dramas, they're all about providing the elite narrative, the mainstream narrative, that the people must be protected from terrorism. And the only way to do that is to strip liberties and to watch everybody. And of course, the cast is featured within this flipped pyramid, this flipped Illuminati triangle. And more from Person of Interest, Primary Threat. You'll notice in these shows, the primary threat, the terrorists, are very often depicted as white Christian fundamentalists, constitutionalists, uh, and things of that nature. And uh, it's a narrative that they continue to parrot. And in this Transformers poster, we see two worlds collide, one survives. They even feature Stonehenge in this particular image. But two worlds collide, one survives is very biblical in terms of what may be going on at CERN. And it certainly relates to Revelation 9, which I read at the beginning of this video. And then this last one is really interesting. From the executive producer of The Witch comes the new movie The Void, which features a multi-legged demon or a Medusa some sort of alien, something from another dimension, piercing through the void and coming into our dimension through, in this case, this pyramid-shaped source of light. Again, what's going on at CERN? What are they really trying to do at CERN? According to Anthony Patch and other researchers, what's going on at CERN is extremely nefarious and much more spiritual in nature than what they're admitting to. And I'll just round out with this passage from Revelation 9, and in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. If you don't have the full armor of God, when these events take place, if they were to take place in our lifetimes, as is said in the Bible, men's hearts will fail them from fear of what comes on the earth. And I'll leave you guys with this. For anybody who doesn't understand CERN and what's really going on at the Large Hadron Collider as it pertains to the spiritual realm, I want to leave you with this video that took place at CERN. And this video was leaked on the internet. Now, whether or not it was an actual human sacrifice or a mock human sacrifice, it clearly speaks to the fact that there is a much larger story behind what's really going on at CERN. Things are coming. Now, let me tell you something. What you're going to see in this next little segment is a kingdom divided. I just want you to watch.
Watch what's going on in politics. Watch the vitriol. People saying it's okay to shoot congressmen, uh, cutting people's heads off. Uh, Kathy Griffin, you know, Jim Carrey, shame on all you people. I had a dream the other night about that I was playing golf with Donald Trump and I was standing beside him with a club in my hand. And I was, you know, considering my options when I suddenly woke up. You know, it was one of those dreams where you want to just get back to sleep so you can finish it. Y'all are pathetic monsters. It's not okay in any arena to be doing what they're doing. It's not okay for Maxine Waters to be going impeach 45. I mean, all this nonsense. These people are delusional. But you know what? The Bible says because they had pleasure in unrighteousness, God will send them great delusion so that they will believe the lie. And they're getting it. They're getting their delusion. And I don't want people to pay too much attention to politics. Because if you do, you'll get sucked in and you'll start thinking, oh, oh, this is what's running everything. No, it's not. It's between the Lord God and the devil, uh, Lucifer. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a spiritual war between good and evil. That's what's going on. Crowley's philosophies have always been a big part of undergirding the entertainment industry, which makes sense now. If you look at it now, nothing has really changed, right? You have the Katy Perry's, you have all this stuff. It's all the same and it's all pushing the same philosophy. And if you look at what Aleister Crowley believed, man, it is the darkest of dark stuff.